In this video, we will talk about carriers in semiconductors and their properties. So what are carriers? Carriers are the entities in the semiconductor that can carry electric current. Let's refer back to the bonding model. If there are no broken bonds, all valence electrons are locked to their position and could not carry electric current. Equivalently, in the energy band model, if the valence band is completely filled with electrons and the conduction band is completely empty, then there are no carriers that can carry electric current. Only when the covalent bond is broken, the released electron is then free to move around in the crystal lattice and becomes a carrier. In the energy band model, this means that this same electron gets extra energy and jumps into the conduction band. Thus, electrons in the conduction band are carriers. The bonding model and the energy band model are actually equivalent. The energy required to break a bond and the band gap energy Eg are one and the same thing. The freed bonding model electrons and the conduction band electrons are just the different names for the same electrons. The bonding model describes the relationships in space, and the energy band model describes the energy relationships. The other carrier is called the hole. In the bonding model, when a valence electron breaks free, it leaves behind a missing bond. Nearby bond electrons could jump into this missing bond and in turn leaves behind a missing bond in its original place. Thus, it appears that the missing bond is moving around. Since the electron has a negative charge, this hole can be thought as having a positive charge. We can also think of it in the energy band model. The missing bond is empty electronic energy state, and other nearby electrons can move into this energy state and in turn left an empty state of its own. Thus, the empty state is like a bubble in a liquid that can move freely in the crystal lattice. Now let's talk about intrinsic semiconductors. Intrinsic semiconductors are pure semiconductor materials with extremely low impurities. These impurities have no significant effect on its properties. We are interested in the number of carriers in the intrinsic semiconductor, also called carrier concentrations, and are defined as number of carriers per unit volume, usually per cubic centimeter. Carrier concentration is a native property of the material, but it also depends on the temperature. This table lists carrier concentration numbers at room temperature for several intrinsic semiconductors. The electron and hole numbers in the intrinsic semiconductor are equal. This is because that carriers in a very pure material can only be created in pairs. In the bonding model, if a covalent bond is broken, a free electron and a broken bond are created simultaneously. Equivalently in the energy band model, when an electron gets excited into the conduction band, a hole is left behind in the valence band. At absolutely zero temperature, the carrier concentration is zero, since all electrons are in a covalent bond. At elevated temperatures, some covalent bond electrons get thermal energy and escape from their bond, thus become carriers. However, in the intrinsic semiconductor, the carriers are in very low numbers. It looks big in absolute value, but compared with the total covalent bond number in the crystal, that's just one broken bond in every 10 to the power of 13 bonds. Thus, at room temperature, intrinsic semiconductors have very low conductivity. Now let's discuss another important property of carriers, the effective mass. So where does the concept effective mass come from? This comes from the need to properly describe the motion of a carrier in a crystal. First, let's look at a comparison. The left picture shows an electron moving in an electric field E in vacuum. The electron moves freely and obeys Newton's law. Force F equals the electron's rest mass M0 times acceleration A. Now let's look at the right picture. Here we are looking at the motion of an electron in an electric field within the crystal. Can the electron still move freely just like in the vacuum? No, it cannot, because the electron will collide with many semiconductor atoms. Thereby, the electron decelerates periodically. Now can we still directly use F equals rest mass M0 times acceleration A formula? No, since in addition to the applied electric field E, electrons in the crystal are also affected by complex crystalline fields, which are not included in the F equals MA formula. Then how do we describe the electron's motion inside a crystal? It turns out that this can only be solved by quantum mechanics. However, when we examine the electron's motion between collisions, the complex quantum mechanical formula is simplified and it looks identical to F equals MA. But the M here is electron's effective mass, represented by Mn asterisk. The same concept also applies to holes which have a positive charge. The hole's effective mass is represented by Mp asterisk. 
The effective mass concept includes both the internal crystalline field and the quantum mechanical effects. So now we get this conclusion. The electron and holes can be treated as classical particles when we use their effective mass. This applies both as concepts and in mathematical calculations. So a carrier's effective mass is a mass that it seems to have when responding to forces, or the mass that it seems to have when it interacts with other identical particles in a the thermal distribution. The effective mass is used to simplify energy band structures, since now we can treat a carrier within the crystal as a free carrier in vacuum with its effective mass m asterisk. For electrons or electron holes in a solid, the effective mass is usually stated in units of the true rest mass of electron m0 which is 9.11 times 10 to the power of minus 31 kilogram. In this unit, it is usually in the range 0.01 to 10, but can also be lower or higher, for example, reaching 1000 in exotic heavy fermion materials. The electronic effective mass is an important basic parameter that influences measurable properties of the solid, including everything from the efficiency of a solar cell to the speed of an integrated circuit. Thank you.